So let's take a look at section 2.3, which is moving into categorical data. So remember in chapter 1, we said we basically have two general types of data, either numerical or categorical. So for numerical, we talked about the three types of graphs we can use to describe those, a dot plot, a histogram, or a stem plot. So now for categorical, we're going to look at the graphs we use for those. So the first, and maybe the most common, I'm not sure, is the, is the bar graph. You've probably seen a bar graph. Um, it's very similar to a histogram, except for it's used exclusively for categorical data. Oops, let's try that again. Categorical data. So categorical data means we're going to use a bar graph. The bars with a, with a bar graph do not touch. Remember, with histograms, they do. So that's one key difference visually. And with a bar graph, the order of the bars does not matter. And that's probably the main difference. Because with categorical data, you're talking about things where there's no inherent order. Say you're comparing types of cars, Honda, Ford, Nissan. doesn't matter which one you list first. With numerical data, the order obviously does make a difference. If somebody gets a score of a 1 versus a score of a 100, those make a difference. So probably the biggest difference with bar graphs is that the order of the bars generally does not matter. Now we can use StatCrunch to create a bar graph, and here are the directions for it. It's hard for me to show you using the software how to do it in StatCrunch, but it's really pretty straightforward. You're going to put your data in a column on a spreadsheet. You're going to go to Graphs, and then Bar Plot, and select the column that you want to plot. If we wish to plot the bar graph with what's called relative frequency, and I'll show you that in just a minute, then in the bar plot we would choose type relative frequency. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. So let's look at an example. Suppose the following table is the academic stand of students in a math class, so meaning their, their year, either they're a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, a senior. Um, UN stands for unknown. I just wanted to have another category here. So first thing we can do, let's go ahead and put this into, and if we were using StatCrunch, this wouldn't be a necessary step, but just to kind of help us organize the data, let's put this into a frequency table. So how many freshmen do we have in our group? So I'm looking at it, it looks like we've got one here and one here, so it looks like we have two freshmen. Uh, how many sophomores do we have in the group? I've got it next to me, so I'm going to speed it up. If you count, there's going to be six sophomores in the group. There's going to be five juniors, and then, let me write that again, there's going to be five juniors, so we had six sophomores, five juniors, and then I've got two seniors in the group, and then I have seven that are unknown. There are a total of 22, so you can see there are 22 students, so the total for my frequencies should add up to 22, and I think if you check it, you'll see that it does. The relative frequency, you can almost kind of think of like a percentage. That's really what it is, a percentage just in decimal form. So if there are two freshmen out of a total of 22, the relative frequency for freshmen would be 2 out of 22, which in decimal form would be 0 0.09. Okay? For sophomores, the relative frequency would be 6 out of 22, and in decimal form, that would be 0.09. Two, seven. So if we think of this like a percentage, that means 27% of the group are sophomores. That's the relative frequency. Juniors would be 5 out of 22, so that puts us at a relative frequency of 0.23. Uh, seniors are 2 out of 22 again, so 0 0.09. And then the unknowns would be 0.32. So your relative frequency should add up to a total of 1. That would be like 100%, and you'll see that it does. Um, so let me go to the next page here. I think for you, let me check your notes. Yeah, so I'm on the next page. So if we were to go to StatCrunch and follow those steps above and put these in order, or may, have it make a graph for us, a bar graph, this is what the graph would look like. So first of all, the graph using just the frequencies, let me go back for a second, the frequencies 2, 6, 5, 7, and 2, that's shown in the first picture. We've got a height of the bar for freshmen is 2, the height of the bar for juniors is 5, the height of the bar for seniors is 2 again, and so forth. Now, these are not in any kind of order. These are completely random. We could have it do them in alphabetical order if we wanted to, freshmen to seniors if we wanted to. It does not matter because the order they're in doesn't make a difference for bar graphs. 
Below it, you'll see the same information. So from StatCrunch, I checked that relative frequency option, and that gives us this graph here. So you notice that the shape is the same. However, I want to caution you, the shape doesn't really tell us a whole lot, again, because the order is not doesn't matter. But the height of the bars, I should say, is the same. Uh, but you'll see this is the bar chart using the relative frequencies. I'm going to abbreviate relative frequencies. And it says, note that the shape is the same. Shape is the same. And the shape is going to be the same because they basically, the data, they represent the same data compared to the entire group. A Pareto chart is a special type of bar chart in which the bars are arranged from tallest to shortest. So from the tallest graph to the shortest graph, um, we have what's called a Pareto chart. So it's still a bar chart, it just means we, we have it arranged the graph from tallest, the bars from tallest to shortest. Uh, in order to do that in StatCrunch, you're going to go to Graph, Bar Plot, and you're going to choose the option for Count Descending. All right, let's do a quick comparison here for um, uh, histograms compared to bar charts. So a couple of different comparisons. Histograms, the data type, remember, has to be numerical. And for bar charts, we use that with data that is categorical. Oops, categorical. Oh, sorry about that. Categorical. Um, the bars with a histogram should touch. However, with a bar chart, the bars do not touch. Uh, the width with a histogram, the bars with a histogram should be the same width. Remember, we call that the bin width from the last unit, the last section. Um, the bar chart, they may not be the same width. However, they really should be uh, the same width when you draw a bar chart. It would be a little bit misleading, let's say, like if this, if this freshman bar were wider this way than, say, the junior bar. I think that would probably lead to some kind of a misleading graph. So they should really be the same. However, they don't have to be. And then finally, the horizontal labels with a histogram, they must go in numerical order. However, remember with a bar chart, there is no inherent order because you're working with categorical data. So no inherent order. All right, so those are the main differences between a histogram and a bar chart. Other way we're going to represent categorical data is using a pie chart. So I'm sure you've all seen a pie chart before. It's a circle that is divided into pieces. So into pieces that are proportional to whatever free percentage of the entire popular sample that they make up. So the area of each proportion, or the area, try that again, the area of each portion is proportional proportional to the relative frequency or percentage of the data that's represented in that piece. And making pie charts are very easy. In StatCrunch, here's your instructions again. You're going to go to graphs, pie plot this time, and then choose with summary if you've got the data in your, uh, in your spreadsheet. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in, in class. So here's just a quick example. This is our, our same data we had earlier. A lot of times they'll use colors to kind of help see the different pieces and see where the, the breaks are. For example, the blue versus the green versus the yellow. Um, but you can see that each wedge is proportional. So the juniors take up a larger proportion of the entire graph than, say, the seniors. And so the wedges should be proportional. If they are not proportional or if they're all the same, I would say that's probably a misleading graph. There's also an option. I didn't do it in this graph, but there is also an option to put the percentages and label those inside each one of these little bars. Or I think you can put them on the outside here as well. So to summarize, when we're dealing with categorical data, we have two options to display the data on a graph, either using a bar graph or a pie chart.